Hi everyone, this is Heather from Maxon UK. The effect I'm going to show you today is actually part of a series of tutorials showing some more basic or more general MoGraph effects. So it's more geared towards a newbie or even if you can't just figure out how to achieve one of these effects. So by the end of it we should be able to recreate this animation here. I have decided to cut it down into shorter single tutorials rather than doing one massive one that takes hours so that you can just watch the effects you're interested in if that's what you want. So first up is this effect that you can see at the beginning of the video uh, where the cylinders kind of appear in a 360 spin and then disappears in the same way. So let's get started. First of all we need a cylinder which we can find from the Primitive Objects menu on the top toolbar. In the Attributes Manager, which appears in the bottom right hand corner, we need to set the radius to 150 centimeters and then the height to 10. Then I'm going to increase the rotation segments to 60 so that we get a nice smooth edge. So first of all, we need to animate this cylinder appearing and disappearing before we even add MoGraph. We can do this using the Slice tab of the Cylinders Attribute Manager. If you tick the Slice tick box, you will see that our cylinder is cut in half. Um, this is due to the From and To settings you see underneath. At the moment, the start point for the slice is starting in the wrong place. I actually want the cylinder to slice uh, vertically rather than horizontally. So if we go to the Rotate tool along the top toolbar, we can rotate the cylinder around the green axis band 90 degrees. Hold down the shift key after you've started to rotate to get the increments of 10 degrees. We now need to select the cylinder again to get back to the attributes manager. Then the from and to parameters both need to be set to 360 degrees. You should see that the cylinder almost completely disappears apart from a tiny, tiny slitter. So this is how I want the animation to start. So we can record a keyframe um, for the two parameter with the time slider down here set at zero. To record a keyframe, all you have to do is click the gray circle to the left of the parameter. You'll see that it goes block red and this confirms that a keyframe has been set for this parameter at the position of your time slider, so it's zero. Now we need to move the time slider forward to frame 30, then reduce the two value to zero. Record another keyframe again by clicking on the circle. You should be able to see now that if you drag your time slider up and down like I'm doing, um, that the cylinder will appear and you'll start to see an animation. So now we want the cylinder to disappear again. So with the time slider still at frame 30, we can record a keyframe for the from parameter, just as we did before by clicking on the circle. Then move the time slider forward to 60 and reduce the from to zero degrees and then record another keyframe. Again, you can check the animation is correct by dragging your time slider along. Um, alternatively, you can just press play as well and you'll be able to see, see it in kind of real time as well. So now it's time to add some MoGraph. So go to the MoGraph menu and find the cloner. This is a widely used MoGraph generator and it clones whatever is a child of it um, in various different ways. Once a cloner is in the object manager, we need to make the cylinder a child. We can do this by clicking and dragging on the cylinder until it's hovering above the cloner and you should see um, a little white arrow pointing downwards. Then you can release. You should see that the cylinder gets kind of tucked underneath the cloner in the object manager. And you should also see that we have the beginnings of three cylinders instead of one in the viewport. One thing that has happened is that the cloner is basically given its coordinates to the cylinder, which is normal when you make an object a child of another object. It will take on the same coordinates of the parent. Um, in this case, we can just rotate the cloner just like we did the cylinder. So again, grab the rotate tool, 
rotate 90 degrees, remembering to hold down that shift key. Select the cloner so we can see the attribute manager and make sure that you are in the object tab. If I press play um, on the animation, you can see that the clones of the cylinder are on top of each other, which is what we want, but the gap at the minute is far too big. So the cloner has lots of modes in which it can copy clones. In this case, we are lucky as linear is the default and it happens to be the mode that we want. By default, the count is set to three and this is how many clones I want in total as well. If you would like to add more, you can do so just by clicking and dragging on that slider or you can type in your the amount of clones that you want in the window as well. One thing we do need to do is reduce the gap. You can see slightly further down that there are settings called P, X, Y and Z. These control the position of the clones and by default the position Y is set to 50 centimetres which is too much. Reduce this to 10 centimetres which should mean that the cylinders are touching and stacking on top of each other. Now if I press play, it just looks like I've created a thicker cylinder. So we need to scale down the clones so that the middle one is smaller and the top one is the smallest. So we can do this using an effector. An effector is something that is added to a generator, in our, in our case the cloner, to give a certain effect on the position, the scale or the rotation of the clones. There are loads of different effectors to choose from that will do lots of different things. In our case, we want a step effector. This will go through our clones and alter them slightly one by one. So to add an effector, first we need to make sure that the cloner is selected. Then if you go to the MoGraph menu, then go to effector and then find step you should see a change straight away. If you didn't, you probably didn't select the cloner first. So we can see that a change has now been made. However, it's not exactly the effect that we want. Again, this is down to the default settings that are applied to the step effector. If you select the step effector to bring up the attribute manager, in the parameter tab, you will see that the scale is on by default and it's set to one which is why we're getting this unwanted effect. Instead of one in the scale window, change the scale to minus 0 0.5. You can see that we're getting closer to the effect we want, but not quite. At the moment, the, the effector is scaling on all three axes, including the Y axis, which effectively um, controls the height. We don't want the height to be affected, so we need to turn off that uniform scale. This will now give us three separate axes instead of one global one. So we can now set the X and the Z axis both to minus 0 0.5. And this will give us a scaling that we want without affecting that Y axis. So now that the scale is sorted, we can work on the offset of the animation. We want the large cylinder to appear first, shortly followed by the medium one and then the smallest. The easiest way of doing this is by using the time offset. You'll find this in the parameter tab of the step effector right at the bottom. If I set this to 30, that means that the last clone will finish its animation 30 frames after the first clone is started, like so. If you want to, you can also tick the rotation parameter, which will offset where the cylinder will start growing. Um, if I use a value of minus 360, for example, you can see that the different effect that I get. So it might be worth playing about with. So that's the animation nearly sorted. You can, however, um, see that we have a slight problem of the cylinder being visible at the start and at the end of the animation. We can solve this using the enabled parameter of the cylinder. So if you select the cylinder in the object manager to bring up the attributes for it, and then we need to go to the basic tab. In the basic tab, you will see there is a tick box titled enabled. With the time slider at zero, 
if you untick that enabled tick box, um, it will basically stop us from, from seeing it. So we can left click um, on this grey circle to record a keyframe. Then if you move the time slider forward only one frame, so to frame one, and then tick the enable tick box. Again, record another keyframe. Then I'm going to move forward to frame 60 and record a keyframe with the tick box for enabled on. And then I'm going to go forward to frame 61, untick the enabled tick box and record again. Okay, so hopefully that's worked. Um, you can again just play through the animation just to make sure. So the last thing we need to do now is the material for the cylinders. To add a new material, we can simply double click in any free space in the material manager down here. Then double click on the preview window to open up the editor. Because we want each of the clones to have its own color, we need to add a MoGraph texture. So click on the arrow to the right of the word texture and then go to MoGraph and then multi-shader. Um, it's worth mentioning quickly, just make sure you're in the color channel when you do this. Okay, so to get to the multi-shader settings, click on either the word multi-shader that's in the window or the preview window just underneath. Once you're in the settings, you will see space for two shaders. We can add one more, but just by clicking on the add button. So now we can choose three colors we would like the clones to be. So in each of the texture window, add a color shader and then create a color of your choice. To go back to the multi-shader options to choose your next color, just click on this black arrow um, that's pointing upwards. It takes you up a page. Okay, so we need to make sure that the mode is set to index ratio. This will apply one color to one clone. It's worth mentioning that if you have chosen to have more than three clones, um, the first few clones will be your first color, then the second few clones will be your second color. So you may want to add more than three shaders in that case. So once we have finished working on the material, we can apply it onto the cloner. So I'm just going to close down the editor and then I'm going to click and hold down on the material and drag it onto the cloner in the objects manager. Okay, so hopefully that has applied the material onto the cloner for you. You should see a small texture tag appear on, on the right of the cloner. Um, so that's how you know if you've done it correct and also you'll see it appear um, on your cylinders as well. So just to make sure, I'm just going to render a small preview to see how it looks rendered. You can do that by going to the middle clapperboard icon and then selecting make preview. It will automatically do um, all of the frames by default. So that's the first tutorial done. Um, in the next tutorial, we'll be looking at a fracture generator and a plane effector as well. So watch this space.